Hello and welcome to another episode of A Very Good Social Media Podcast, where we try to live up to that name every single day. I'm your host, Zach Gellia. Let's get into it. So today's guest is someone who's been in the industry since 2012 in a variety of different roles across sports teams, agencies, and other organizations. Uh, And most recently and currently, uh, she is the Managing Director of Brand Marketing at Team IFA, which is the premier full-service agency for athletes and brands. Um, Her and I crossed paths back in 2017 um, when we were both in the NFL, her with the Vikings, me with the Steelers. Uh, And really, she was someone and her team were a group of people that we used as inspiration all the time. Um, You know, the Vikings still to this day have some incredible content and really push the limits of what's possible and what's next. Um, So Felicia and I got to know each other and and it's obviously been way too long uh, since we've last chatted. Uh, So very excited to see what she's been up to for the last six years. because a lot has changed in the industry uh, and I'm sure in her life and my life as well. Um, So very excited to talk to her uh, and just pick her brain even further about, you know, her journey and and how she got to where she is today. Uh, And I honestly, I can't wait for this conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome Felicia Johnson to the show. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you, Zach. This has been so fun. I'm excited to get to get to the conversation today. So thanks for having me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's great. It's, you know, I I looked over your LinkedIn and everything and obviously did some research, but, you know, looking back at you started in the industry in 2012, um, which even predates when I got in the industry. And I know so much has changed. You know, our our paths kind of crossed whenever uh, we were both in the NFL. Uh, I think it was back in 2017, if I, I did mm-hmm. my research correctly, but you with the That's Vikings, right. me with the Steelers. And um, so it was always like, I could always see what you were up to because we were going through the same schedule at the same time. And uh, we always use the Vikings as inspiration for a bunch of different things. And, um, you know, it was always you guys and, and the Carolina Panthers where it was like, you would do something and we would go, oh, man, like, why didn't we think of that? So yeah. just even going back to when you first started, you know, how did you get to where you are? Maybe tell us a little bit about, um, you know, your current role and what you're up to now, but just the floor is yours. I just want to hear about your journey and, you know, only knowing a little piece of it. Uh, I'd love to know the rest. I've been a lot of places. I've worked in a lot of roles. So I'll start with where I am now and then I'll give you the origin story. Um, so I am currently the managing director of brand marketing at an athlete representation agency called Team IFA. We're based out of Minneapolis, so it's very cold here. Um, but I am I've been here for eight months now and I'm on the representation side. So our agency has historically been known for contract negotiation, lifestyle management, um, just giving our athletes resources from a football standpoint. But with you know NIL becoming what it is now and athletes taking on more sponsorships. Uh, we have a marketing side of the business that's really been growing. And so my job on the marketing side is to help our athletes secure deals and figure out how their content looks when they when it comes to partnerships. But also there's a growing side of the business um, where we work with brands who are in the sports space who are looking for strategy or consulting on how to activate. So if you have a partnership with the Vikings or with the Pirates, for example, and you don't have a sports strategist in-house, that's something that we kind of come in and do. Um, and it kind of takes my experience from agency and sports and, and puts it to good use. So that's what I'm up to today. Uh, we have a number of clients that are in the NFL. We only manage football athletes right now, but then we're also working with a bunch of NCAA athletes who are either you know in the transfer portal right now or looking for um, NIL deals, or they're actually heading to the draft this year. So all that's to say, that's what I'm up to right now. No day is the same. Uh, and it's really exciting, but it's also really, really crazy as you can imagine. Um, but how did I get here? I've actually, you know, thought a lot about this lately of like, what, how did I get here? Um, I, as you mentioned, started in the industry in 2012. So when I graduated college, I had secured an internship at an agency in town called Fallon. And they were one of the big ones in Minneapolis. Um, Right when I graduated, I started full-time and I was doing account management and a hybrid of social media management. And that was before social media for brands was a thing. That was on Facebook when a brand was still considered a person because they hadn't launched brand profiles yet. So (laughs) that probably dates me a little bit, but I've been doing this for a really long time and seen so many eras of social media. Um, And then from there, 
I went to another agency and started heading up their content creation practice. So that's when content studios were really popular and influencers started taking off, moved into that role. And then from there, I started my job with the Vikings, which was obviously a dream job. Um, hometown team. I'm from Minnesota. So it was the perfect culmination of everything in, in my world, but had never worked in sports. So I think I got hired in that role because I didn't have sports experience and that's what they were looking for. Um, and spent two and a half seasons there. That's where I met you and met a lot of awesome people across the NFL, both on the franchise side and the league side, which was cool. And then decided I needed a change of pace and went back to agency life and then eventually got recruited out of that into brand side. So I've been on the agency side, team side, brand side, and now athlete side, which is, it's given me a unique perspective because I, I know how the business works from all sides of the table, which is really cool. So that's what I've been up to. Um, I probably, you know, truncated that timeline quite a bit, <laughs> but it's hard to talk about 12 years and 12 seconds, but I, well, I tried sure. my best. So no, yeah. for sure. Well, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, like I, I thought going from football or from NASCAR to football to baseball kind of provided me with a, a really unique perspective, but it's like going from like four or five different angles of those things uh, that you've been a part of is, is really, really cool. But um, that's always my like my claim, not claim to fame, but something I always bring up is like, yeah, like I was in social when you couldn't put video on Twitter or, or mm -hmm. X, I guess now. And, and mm -hmm. you know, TikTok didn't exist. And we, you know, with the Steelers launched the first Musical.ly account when that was a thing. So oh it's, it, it's so crazy how far it's come and, um, you know, and, and the careers that it's kind of launched from there, you know, like you said, like there were different things where it's like, you know, creator studios almost didn't exist. And then they were a big thing and it's kind of evolved in such a cool way um, that it's, it, it's crazy where things have gone uh, yeah. you know, over the last 10, 15 years. So I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And to yeah. think about where they're going is even crazier. So yes. Oh yeah. I, and those, so I, I have a couple of like the most typical questions that you'll probably be asked and, and I'm sure you've been asked a bunch of times, but um, just trying to dig more into, you know, like, like I talked about, like how you got to where you are and then any advice that you have for the next generation and, and people who are trying to kind of walk in your shoes and, and get to where you are. So, I mean, the first thing was like, when you were a kid, what, what was the dream? You know, cause like every, every time I do an interview, it's like, you know, when did you know that this was a career and when did you know that social media was you know, your thing. And it was like, well, I, there wasn't even classes about it when I was in college. So I yeah. had no idea. So, totally. so take, yeah. So take me back to even like when you were younger, what, what was the dream and how did it kind of mold into what it is now? Yeah. It's really interesting to think about this because nowadays when you ask a kid what they want to be, when they grow up, a content creator or an influencer is a thing that you right. <laughs> <laughs> For me, I think I, I loved, I've always loved sports, but I never knew that there were jobs in sports, especially going into high school and college, you think more traditional routes, you know, you go finance, marketing, PR, I mean, whatever the, the route is. Um, so when I learned that sports was an option, I, I, it was, I was all in on it. Um, and I honestly don't think I'll go back on that. Um, when I was younger, I thought I would be working with animals. And I guess that's still true today. I do work with animals just in, <laughs> A different way, but right. <laughs> um, I never, never knew that this was even an option. And I remember in high school when Instagram came out and people were starting to use it, I'm like, this is crazy. Like technology was changing so quickly. And then as soon as I got into college, there were marketing classes and digital marketing classes. And that was like right at, you know, the dawn of the social media age. And so I didn't have classes I could take. I didn't have brands that I could point to on social to say that they did it well. So I very much uh, started my career when the when the industry started, which was really awesome because it allowed me to grow along with the industry and presented me with and still presents me with so many opportunities that I could not have even forecasted in in my career. Um, all that's to say, I kind of knew that I'd be in social media my senior year of college when I took a class that was Thursday nights from 7 to 9 p.m. It was the worst possible time. It actually did not count for any credits. Um, and it was an e-marketing class that the professors were adjunct professors at my first job, Fallon. And that's how I got the job. Um, so I, I ended up skipping all the fun late night 
drinking festivities and pizza nights with, with fellow students and uh, took a class and it ended up, you know, changing the entire course of my career. Um, but that's how it started. Amazing. Really, It's no more simple and no more complicated than that. Yeah. No. And, and I mean, I guess it, it kind of all worked out in the end. Right. So oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's like, and anytime I've talked about it is like when I went to college, uh, it was, I, I went to play hockey. So it was like, mm-hmm. okay, but you're not going to go to the NHL. So what, what's the plan? It's like, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. I'll figure it out. So it was like, I wanted to be an architect for 10 minutes until I realized how much like the supplies and books and stuff cost. So that changed kind of like a decision like that, that would change everything. And then it's mm-hmm. like, I, you know, I had classes like radio studies and like things that really didn't, wouldn't really matter at this point in time, but it kind of guided me in that direction. Like I remember making, you know, goofy videos and like the, the news studio that we had at school for, you know, to invite people to parties that we were having with me and my buddies. But it's like, it's crazy that that, then magically becomes a career and, and how it kind of all works together. But, um, yeah. and, and I that's the cool, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say my degree, I think is it's technically in advertising, but it was in the journalism school. And so it was kind of like a roll of the dice at that point, but I ended up working at an advertising agency. So when people are like, you know, did you, are you actually doing the job you went to school for? I can say yes, but it's like, <laughs> then, then that and some, I'm doing more than the job I went to school for. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. All right. Well then it, it, kind of getting into a little bit more of the nitty gritty of just what we do on a daily basis. Um, you know, from, from your perspective, what goes into a successful and successful content strategy? Yeah. I think before we get into that, there's so many routes that you can go to in social media. There's content creation, there's social media management, there's influencer management, there's strategy. I cut my teeth in strategy. That's where I started um, really because brands just didn't know how to be on social. And that was an inherently strategic project to work on. So when it comes to building strategies, I have a kind of a personal approach that I take and I take into account three things. I take into account what is right for the brand or the team that I'm working on. What is right for the fan and what do they want? What is the truth about them that is undeniable? Um, And oftentimes those are more generalizations, but they can be specific too. And then the third area is what is, what makes this uniquely social or inherently right for the platform that I'm talking about, whether that be TikTok or Instagram. And if you look at the overlap of those circles, if you're thinking the three concentric circles, that overlap is really small, but when you get it right, you crush. The ideas are great. The fans are really happy. The content team's really happy. The social media person's happy. And the organization and the team that you're working for is happy. So like in a perfect world, it has to take into account all three things. Something that I've been thinking a lot about lately, especially as Gen Z is really taking, is, you know, dominating social media is like, just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's not strategically right. And that has been a hard thing to walk away from because for so long I was the target market of so much social content and now I'm not. And so that's been something from a strategy standpoint to really like wrap my head around is, you know, my personal opinion and strategy, mining strategy are two different things. And I always need to make sure that in mind the strategy. So that's been my approach really my entire career. And it's held held true today because even if platforms change, that strategy still, you know, my approach still stands strong and is true. So that is my my way of thinking about it. For sure. Well yeah, I mean, one thing you said that just sticks with me is like um just knowing that you are not the target audience of the content that you're trying to put out, which, you know, back when I started in NASCAR, it was like, we're trying to attract an audience that's doesn't know much about NASCAR and we're trying to make them interested. And it's like, oh, well, that's easy. Cause that's me. I like, I am the target audience. I'll make content that I think is cool and we're good. And I think that's been an evolution for me specifically too, that it's like, you know, my team will have meetings and, and they'll be like, did you see that trend on TikTok? And it's like, nope, no, no. <laughs> Like my, I have that probably twice a day. Yeah, I mean, that I sent you, and I'm like, no, no. I haven't. <laughs> and it's like, and and it like, I basically am like, I trust me, I have not seen any of this stuff because, like, 
to TikTok's credit, like the algorithm is so good that it pushes the stuff that I want to see. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, dad jokes and, um, you know, I, what was the other thing I watched now? It was like bushcraft of like people making like cabins out of like stuff. And, and so it's like the stuff that my team, who's 10, 12 years younger than I am, that they're seeing is so different. But it's like that's, you know, that's where becoming, you know, the leader and, and less of like the doer. And it's like you lean into these these young, talented people who know what they're talking about. And just, you know, you have to take that leap of faith of just like, well, I, I don't understand it, but if you think it's cool, let's give it a shot and go from there. There's a high degree of trust involved with social media. And all that's to say is like sometimes you get it wrong and that's OK. But when you get it right, you get it right. And that's when you know, there are videos that my mom has sent me and my coworkers have sent me where there's like the great equalizer content where it like is so relatable to everyone that it almost transcends target audiences. But your yeah. feed is very different than mine. Mine is predominantly golden retrievers. I don't have yeah. a golden retriever, <laughs> but I must watch and send a lot of those videos because that is what I get 95% of the time, which is cool. Oh, it's so funny. That's I like the new thing that I watch aside from the guys making cabins in the woods is like, these guys who trade watches, uh, in like New York city. And I, I, I have an Apple watch. I've never bought a really nice watch. I don't even know that I really care that much about it, but the content is so good that that's what floods my timeline now. And I end up sitting there watching it for, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes. And it's like, like, I, I have no interest in having a Rolex. Like, why, do, why does this content matter to me? But that's hey, like, that's the dream, does. right? Right. Yeah, like that's so strange. That's what you want is like, I want people, you know, sitting on their couch, scrolling through stuff to see stuff from the pirates that, you know, they're not interested in baseball. They don't care about the pirates. They're not for Pittsburgh, but they're like, oh, this is good stuff. Like that's, that's the whole goal right there. It's the win for sure. I agree. Yeah. Good and agree more. <laughs> so one thing that I, I always talk about and work through is like, you know, anytime you go home for the holidays and it's like, you know, oh, so what do you do? Like you just sit on Instagram all day. Like that must be so nice, so easy. And it's like, well, there's a lot that goes into it. So just take, take us through like your, just your process from like, here's the idea or here's what we want to do. And then all the way to now it's time to post it and see what the world thinks. Yeah. It's twofold for me. So I am currently managing our, uh, agencies, social media channels. So as the company that is looking to represent athletes, we also have to represent ourselves and make sure that we're attracting them. And so I work with a creative team and a production team here, very small, but very scrappy, awesome team uh, where we're planning as far out as we can, typically a month out. Um, and we kind of know what that cadence of content is going to look like over time. But when you work in sports and when you work with people, things will happen on a moment's notice and you have to figure out how to turn around content in two hours or less, which can be very challenging, especially with a strapped team. But I'm very lucky that our team here is highly skilled and we have kind of come up with systems and processes where that isn't a headache anymore. Uh, so that's really awesome. But every day is different. I wish I could say that, you know, you come in and you do the same thing over and over and there's a lot of repetition, but I actually think that's why I love my job and love this industry is because I don't fatigue of what I do. It's a different day every day. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's really exciting. Uh, sometimes it's confusing, but, um, there are very few industries where that's the case. If I wanted to sit behind a spreadsheet all day long, I could have chosen an industry that would allow me to do that. But I thrive on creative energy and collaboration and problem solving and finding you know ways in for news. So that is why uh, social media is so great. Uh, so this, the day changes, but there's a good chance, and I can look at my weekly screen time to confirm that I am scrolling feeds, not because I'm, you know, doom scrolling or mindlessly doing something. It's because I'm looking for material to work with. I'm looking for trends that I can pitch to our athletes. I'm looking for inspiration that I can send to our designer for how we can talk about a new athlete signing. So social media is in my opinion, like the world's greatest focus group, there's so much content out there that you can draw inspiration from, um, you know, and, and pass along that can serve as inspiration. Um, so I I'm on it all the time. Uh, sometimes it looks like I'm not paying attention in meetings, but I promise I am. But yeah, the question always comes up with family, like, what do you actually do? And in the context of sports, they started to get it. Uh, but, uh, 
it is fun to say like, yeah, I do get to be on the internet all day long. And I actually get to create the things that you see uh, and that you share with your friends and family and your coworkers. And so that's, that's really cool to be able to say that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, I've always said like the blessing and the curse of our industry is no two days are the same. And it's like, it keeps things fresh, but it, you always have to be learning and ahead of the game. And uh, it, it's definitely, it's challenging and it's, but that's, you know, that's the fun. That's, that's the same thing I talk about. I think the hardest part when you're deciding in social media, what industry you want to work in is deciding whether or not you want to go brand side, if you want to go corporate, if you want to work for a team, what's really unique about sports and something that I think attracts a lot of people to sports is that it is one of the few industries that people still seek out. When you think about advertising, it's very much push messaging. It's like, I want you to do this, buy this, think about this. Whereas people will look up their favorite teams on Instagram. I can't tell you how many people are doing that with a brand. But I know for a fact, they're going to media entities, they're going to ESPN, they're going to Barstool Sports, they're going to their favorite athlete and seeing what they're doing. Um, So I think sports is unique in that way. And I think if that's something that excites you, sports is the way to go. But if you're someone that enjoys strategy and marketing, a brand side option might be great as well. So that's definitely one of the things to consider having been on both sides. It's like sports is so this protected kind of idolized thing that people are interested in, which makes your job a lot easier. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, people are wearing Raiders gear and Yankees gear. They're not necessarily wearing, you know, Pepsi gear or, you know, (laughs) Sour Patch Kids shirts. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely a different world. Yeah. Though I think brands are wishing they could be that way, but you can't, you can't create culture with brands. No, uh, for sure. And in sports. So. Yeah. And it, and it's those moments, like, you know, you have the, the commercials and, and the activations and the things with brands that really stand out and are big to you, but it's like, you remember the games, you remember the players, you remember the moments. And it's like, it's, it's already that inherently baked into kind of who you are and what you love that it's like, oh, well, this is where I'm from. This is my team. So I need to follow along. Absolutely. Which is, I do it myself knowing that I'm following the social media manager of a team. I'm also, you know, I, I check in and see what they're up to too. Um, along with my fantasy sports apps and yeah. my and scores and all the other sports things that I'm doing. So yeah. it's pretty cool. It's very special. And I think sometimes in the industry, we take it for granted a little bit, but it is very special. And, and I, it is nice to reflect on that and cherish it a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, yeah. So now that we're talking about um, kind of the different um, the different paths you can take to get where you want to go. You know, I, I'd love to hear from, from your perspective, like just talking to the next generation of, you know, professionals in this industry. And, um, you know, I'm sure you've hired people in the past and, and will continue to do so. So hearing from someone who has been on both sides of it, you know, what, what advice would you give to, you know, that next generation? And and when they're looking for these jobs, how do they get in their foot in the door? Um, you know, how do they pre- prepare for an interview? All of those things where it's like being on both sides now where, you know, early in my career, obviously I didn't hire anyone. So it's like, you just have your perspective. And now it's like, well, I'm going through it and looking through all these resumes. What would I tell people who, who want to catch my attention? Yeah. I'll answer this in two ways. Um, For people that are looking to get into the industry, I hire less so on experience and more personality types. And the reason that's the case for social media, especially in companies, is because that person is going to be expected to do more than social media by default. And that's not because someone wants to dump a bunch of responsibilities on a social media manager's plate. It's because a company doesn't necessarily know what it entails to be a social media manager. And those people are highly dynamic. We are really good at multitasking. We are really good at relating to those within an organization. I think social media people have characteristics that make us um, smarter and able to relate to everyone in an organization. So I think when I hire people, yes, skills and experience is great. And a portfolio is great. And most people have standard comparable, you know, portfolios or resumes to look at, but I'm looking at, are you competitive? Do you want to hustle? Do you want to help your coworkers be better? Like I'm looking for personality types. And that's the big reason why it's just because we're expected to do a lot in terms of standing out or advice. I'd say, to people that are getting into the industry or who just want to 
maybe try it and see what they think is say yes to opportunities. Take on some contract work for a short time and see what you think. I've always said, sometimes you have to figure out what you do not like to do to know what you like. And it's a trial by fire situation, not ideal, but before you commit and go through an interview process and take on a full-time job, tell me if you like it, try it. You know, every small business in your hometown is looking to do social media. They can't do it themselves and they need support. So I still, to this day, freelance contract for local companies that I care about. I don't have the time to do it, but I do think it's valuable because it teaches me so much. Um, so that's a great way to get experience. That's, you know, low risk, uh, that gives you, you know, talking points in an interview or gives you more credibility when you apply. So at a high level, that's, that's what I, I look for when I hire. Um, but of course, everywhere is different in sports. Typically you need some kind of knowledge or understanding of sports. Um, I will say now to your point earlier, the industry is looking to hire outside of sports. So I do think it's beneficial not to just be so uh, myopic in the sports space, but um, having an understanding of the company that you're entering. If you like, you know, you're going to a food company, you should probably understand cooking and recipes to some degree. If you're going to a gaming uh, company or you're going to an esports team, make sure that you know the game intimately, like you've played it, you've tried it. So that's just some very like, surface level recommendations that I'd make, but hopefully that helps people who For are sure. looking to industry. Yeah. I mean, it, that that's, it's so like you're, whoever you're going to work for is trying to create this world of, you know, whatever it might be. And, and so, like you said, like if it's food based and you understand cooking, you understand recipes, you understand, you know, wine tasting things that are adjacent to that industry, it, it's only going to help in the long run. Absolutely. Yeah. And who knows, like, you might get into to an industry that you know nothing about, a sport that you know nothing about, and you become a true fan of it. That's what you're going to have to become because it is going to be every business day for multiple hours a day. So you better like what you're doing because it's going to pretty much dominate your life. <laughs> yes, definitely. Definitely. Well, so going back to one thing you said about when you're looking for those personalities and, and like trying to identify people who have those characteristics that you're looking for, how can how can someone who is submitting, you know, two pieces of paper, your cover letter and your resume, how can they show you that they have the personality that you're, you're looking for? Yeah. I think anytime you can add some kind of color context on your resume or in your portfolio, personal details, I think are fantastic. I want to work with people I like. I also want to work with people who are skilled. Uh, so me getting to know you as a person will help me understand you as a professional. I also am a big fan of putting personality test traits on your resume. So um, strengths finder, for example, um, that's a great one to include. And it tells me a little bit quickly about who you are, what your uh, personality type is. And I can kind of surmise some things based on what I'm hiring for. So that's one thing that I do quickly. Um, I also think having a strong headline to your resume, just a quick, like, elevator pitch to two sentences or less of the characteristics that you have, uh, that you consider yourself, um, are helpful too, just because I, I don't always get to read every single word down to the letter of every resume. Um, but I will always read the headline and I will always, always read the cover letters. Those that that's really where like the meaningful things come to life. So again, when you're hiring and when you're applying for places, it's very daunting. You might be one of hundreds of applicants, but finding ways to stand out in a creative space like social media is kind of table stakes mm -hmm. at this point. Um, I've seen a lot of creative ways people apply for jobs, whether that be creating separate Instagram accounts that are their resume, whether that be a little website, whether that be a mocked up idea for a brand that you want to work for. I think you have to go the extra mile to stand out because someone else is also probably doing the same at the very same time. So that's what I would say. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And and that's honestly, that's what I tell everyone is like applying for a job is very similar to what you're trying to do on social. It's like, you're trying to get your audience to stop scrolling and watch your stuff. You're trying mm -hmm. to get a hiring manager to stop looking and mm -hmm. focus on your stuff. So um, that all, that all makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Agreed. Well, Hey, so I'm going to finish this with okay. a few just quick hitter questions um, you can answer them as quickly as you want uh, okay. and we'll, we'll kind of end there. So All right, um, good. I'm ready. some of them are 
pop culture. Some of them are other, but um, so what would be your least favorite industry buzzword? This should come as no surprise to any social media person. And I'm sure this will be the same across the board, but the word viral drives me insane, especially <laughs> after we went through a pandemic. Like, yes, yes. We're not going to use that term anymore. Um, I think it's become passe. I think it doesn't mean anything. I think that is a subjective word. What success looks like for one brand might not be the same for another. So I, I try not to use that word. And yeah. to be honest, anytime someone says that word, I'm like, we might be dealing with someone who doesn't quite understand the industry. So. Right. <laughs> no, I, I definitely feel that one. Um, all right. Uh, TikTok, Reels, or Shorts? I am a Reels creator, but a TikTok viewer. Uh, I haven't gotten into shorts, so I don't know what that's like, but um, I will send so many TikToks to my friends. It's it's honestly shameful, um, but I like to create Reels. I'm not as great on TikTok from a content creation standpoint. So, sure. All right. Uh, X or Threads? Threads is growing on me. And I love Threads because of the integration with Instagram. I, I'm kind of an Instagram uh, fan, if you couldn't tell, yeah. <laughs> um, with my you know allegiance to Reels. But I think I like Threads, and I'm really excited to see where they take that platform. I think they've got a big challenge ahead of them trying to figure out how to differentiate based on a concept that was pretty similar. So I'm enjoying Threads a lot. I like it. All right. Uh, blast from the past. Google Plus or IGTV? I never loved Google Plus, so I, I have to go IGTV. I I, I think you're in the yeah I think you're in the majority. I don't know that anyone yeah. enjoyed Google Plus. <laughs> yeah, I have questions for those who say Google Plus, so we'll, yeah. we'll see who answers that. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Parks and Rec or The Office? Ooh, I think you have to go The Office. Oh, see, I, this is always like the the hottest debate anytime I talk to anyone, but um, yeah. It's I'm interesting, small tidbit, my mom worked in local government for a really long time. And so <laughs> that Parks and Rec show is a little triggering for me. The yeah, office, I can imagine. The office is just great, mindless, mindless entertainment. It's the show I fold laundry to now. So yeah, I love that. Um, all right. So last one will be uh, rate the finale of Game of Thrones from one to 10. I think I'm about to get canceled. <laughs> You ended on a hard one. I never watched Game of Thrones, so oh, I man. can't answer. However, as a social media person, it was impossible to ignore it when it was happening. So if I could rate it from a social media standpoint, it was a 12 out of 10 because I knew what was going on without even watching the show. But yeah. I never watched Game of Thrones, so shame on me. Maybe that'll be some good uh, you know, material to watch over the holiday season, but I never yeah. got into it. It, it it took me like probably the whole first season where it was like, I'd watch an episode and then I'm like, eh, and then I'd watch another one, like uh, three days later. Uh, all right, I'm getting it. There's a lot of people. And then, you know, there was one episode, I can't remember what it was, but it just like clicked. And I was like, all right, this is a great show. And I watched it all the way from there. But I mean, um, talk about something that permeated pop culture. There are very few things, sports being one of them that can do that. And that show absolutely did that. Every team that won anything that had to do with North in the name, it was Kings of the North every single time, every single year. The Minnesota Vikings could not love it more. I will yeah. say I used many of those analogies and many of the imagery and some of the voices of the show in that of style. Of when course. I, so. <laughs> well, cool. Well, thank you so, so, so much for doing this. Um, I think it was really valuable to not only to me to, to understand and learn from you and, and your journey, but uh, hopefully to everyone that's going to watch and the millions of people that are going to watch this. Oh, but... yeah. We're... <laughs> Dare I say we're going to go viral? Oh, man. <laughs> but, no, cool. I'm, well, I'm so glad you're doing this and I can't wait to see where you take it. It's going to be awesome. Sounds good. Well, thank you so much, everyone. This was a very good social media podcast. We'll try and live up to that name every day. Uh, I'm Zach Kelly and we'll see you next time.